If nature is a mystery, decoding it has been attempted several times, since times immemorial. Since the discovery of fire to the magical world of CRISPR genome editing, humans have certainly come a long way. And today, we have two great personalities who have once again tried to decode the mysteries of the universe the mysteries of nature in their book, Decoding the World, a roadmap for the questioner. Welcome everybody to the webinar. Today, as we come together in yet another powerful, power-packed webinar, I, Shekhar Suman, CEO and Managing Director at Biotechnica, would like to welcome Mr. Arvind Gupta and Mr. Po Bronson to the webinar. Welcome, Arvind. Welcome, Po. So today, before we begin, before we get started, I wish to introduce our guests in the show, starting with Arvind. Arvind Gupta is a venture advisor at IndieBio and a founder of IndieBio. He co-leads Mayfield's engineering biology practice. As a founder of IndieBio, Arvind redefined the pace and the possibilities of early stage biotech. Investing in over 136 companies in last five years, defining human and planetary health, and growing the Indie Bio portfolio into billions of dollars in value. Under his leadership, Indie Bio expanded to New York, San Francisco, and whatnot. Arvind is the author of Decoding the World, a Roadmap for the Questionnaire, published by 12 books. He was honored with the F50 Global Award for Impact in Health Tech Innovation. He's a frequent speaker at various conferences such as TechCrunch, Dis TechCrunch Disrupt, Slash, TEDx, Future Food Tech, etc. His work has also been profiled in global media outlets such as Bloomberg News, Forbes, The Guardian UK, Neo.Life, Nikki News, Rotman, The Times of India, and CGTN in China. Arvind has been a guest lecturer at UCSF, MIT, and Harvard, and is a judge at annual bioconference startup stadium. So prior to founding Indie Bio, Arvind was design director at IDEO in Shanghai, where he earned numerous international design awards and presented his work at San Francisco Museum, Museum of Modern Art. Arvind received his Bachelor of Science in Genetic Engineering from UCSB, and he holds eight patents as we speak. So welcome Arvind to the show. Under his leadership, IndieBio grew to a $3.2 billion portfolio. Yes, you heard it right, $3.2 billion portfolio. Moving on to our next guest, he is none other than Bo Bronson. Bo is the managing director of IndieBio currently. Prior to joining IndieBio, Bo was a finance and tech journalist covering Silicon Valley for Wired, The New York Times, magazine and an op-ed contributor for the Wall Street Journal. His science journalism has won him various awards. He has been honored with nine national awards. And he is also author of seven best-selling books, including the one which you're seeing on screen, that are available in 28 languages worldwide. His work has been cited in 185 academic journals and 503 books. His book, What Should I Do With My Life, was a major bestseller. It was the number one New York Times bestseller with more than 10 months on the list. So uh, welcome, Po, to the webinar. Welcome, Arvind. Now, let us get started. Be before we get started, audience, be ready with your questions. Right? Okay. 
So before we begin, let's have some opening lines from both of you. Over to you, Avin. So let's quickly bring in Avin, over to you. Thank you so much, Shekhar, for having us. Um, it's a real honor to be on the show. For me, it's a real nice honor. Job. Yeah, for me, it's a real honor to be uh, able to speak with, with India. Uh, you know, it's, um, it's a special honor for me because it's where I'm from. And, um, and more important than that, uh, I think it's where the the next big ideas are going to be coming from. Um, just like uh, Indians have greatly powered the IT revolution, I believe in the long run, we're going to have Indians power the biology revolution. So um, decoding the world is about really science breaking out of the ivory tower and into everyone's lives um, through the food that we eat, through the clothes that we wear, through the building materials that we use. Um, we need biology to reinvent production in order to save the planet that we have. Given so many people coming out of poverty and given the fact that we have uh, an entire new class of billions of people looking to uh, really have the goods that everyone else has, has had, um, which I discovered when I was in China, uh, seeing a billion people <laughs> literally running experiments day after day and, and becoming wealthier. And, you know, everyone deserves to have the good things in life. The, the problem is we're at a point in time where the good things in life will cost us the planet to be able to give to everyone on the planet. So how do we reinvent the production in order to do so? Um, that's the crux of this book. And uh, that's what I'm excited to share with you. All right, great. Thank you, Evan. So over to you, Paul. Would you like to have some, add some lines? Yeah, thank you, Shaker. Uh, I, I, as Arvin was saying, um, you know, I, I came to India about two and a half years ago, and I reckoned, recognized and my dear friend Arvind, uh, a, a stunning and exciting voice for the world. And I want to say hi and thanks to everyone, our fans in a across Asia right now. Uh, what we've done with this book is not necessarily directly about IndieBio. It's inspired by what Arvin created in IndieBio. At IndieBio, Arvin took biology and said, we can do amazing things here in therapeutics and in the healthcare sector and diagnostics and devices, combining it with software and with hardware. But in addition, we can do far more than that. We can begin to reinvent right. our food system, reinvent materials, reinvent energy systems and energy equations of the entire globe. And we write about that science to help enter the audiences understand this possibility. Right, great. That was great insight from Bronson. Thank you. And now we'll kickstart the event. So ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a book launch event. I'll let you know the structure of this event but before that i want to tell you a small thing here now i generally do not recommend something unless i have myself read it myself used the product and i'm satisfied and before i actually bring in the authors i want to tell you that yes i went ahead and bought this book okay so i want uh, you also to go ahead re read this book because it changed my insight towards uh, the biotech and uh, pharma industry. Now, uh, what exactly happened to me is something like this. So this morning I was down with little fever and uh, I was free because, you know, there's nothing much work when you're sick. So I went ahead, went to Amazon and uh, ordered this uh, book's Kindle copy, fired up my Kindle and started reading. In the beginning, the first chapter, I was like, all right, so this is like a book. Towards the end of fourth chapter, this book was talking to me. 
This <laughs> is not a book. Okay. This is a two way conversation. And I jumped up, opened up my notebook and started noting down my ideas because this is a Kickstarter. This book is a Kickstarter of ideas. And I want to tell another thing, which most of the Biotechnica fans and followers ask me, what is the scope? What is the future of biotech? Okay. So this book, this book tells you that if you want to know the future of biotech, if you want to know the future of the world, then go read Decode the World. Having said that, we'll quickly move into our structure. So the structure of this webinar is like this. We are going to throw some questions to Arvind and uh, Bo and Hill. They'll be answering. In the middle of this, whatever questions you have, feel free to you know, uh, put in the chat box and we'll pick them up and we'll, uh, I'll uh, you know, pass on to Arvind and Bronson and they will be replying. And followed by that, towards the end, this is a 60 minutes webinar. We will try to wind up in 60 minutes. We'll have a rapid fire round if time permits. So I'll throw a word and these guys are going to answer that. So that will be a really interesting and tough thing. All right. So let's start with a question and answer session. All right, so let me begin with the first one. I can see while all my followers and fans of Biotechnica are typing in, <laughs> let me ask you a question which I would like to start with and why decoding the world, okay? What do you think is wrong with the world of today? Uh, let's mention over to you. Yeah, um, well, let's start with what is wrong with the world today? Um, we just have to look around. 2020 is a is a special year um, because I think everyone, literally every single person on the planet can agree that 2020 is mm -hmm. a year that the world has gone a bit haywire. Um, and the world has gone a bit right. haywire because of all the choices we've made in the past 200 years. And for some reason, it's coming out in this year. And right. What I'm talking about are the effects of climate change and the effects of wealth inequality, um, the effects of capitalism run rampant without a better capitalism to replace it. And so decoding the world is our answer and our antidote to these things. Right. And more, and like you very uh, astutely said, and uh, it makes me so happy to hear you say it, it's a conversation with the reader that helps them understand yeah. how to get involved and actually how to solve it for themselves. We don't tell you what to go do. Um, we tell you all the things that are ha happening. We decode it for you so you can understand what to do for yourself. We want to empower the world right. to solve the problem because who and I don't have the, you know, no authors are going to tell you like, oh, this is what's wrong and this is how you of solve course. it. We solve it. Yeah. We solve it through a billion experiments. Um, and then, so that's a high level version. I'll let Poe get some, get some more details in there. Well, what uh, Arvind's okay. referring to is a great line in the book. There is no plan, just a way. The fundamental problem of today, one could say, if you had to put a word on it, is that people feel powerless. People feel like the world is being rocked and changed by the genetic revolution, by the uh, global economic impact of China by this sort of war on truth that's happening, by artificial intelligence and robotics, and by climate change. And they feel uh, powerless in the face of these massive megatrends. And they all are desperate and clinging for this idea of what's our way out of this? What's the plan? Decoding the world's message is simple. We experiment our way through this. With a billion experiments, we'll find our way through. By sitting around talking about it and trying to think and trying to plan, we won't. All right, so wonderfully uh, said by Bronson. So there you have it, guys. Now let's bring in quickly, uh, there's an audience question from Bijan Ghosh. And he said, how must the COVID situation be favorable for the biotech world? How do you think it will be favorable for the biotech world? I'm sorry, repeat the question. Uh, how will what be for the biotech world? COVID. The COVID-19 situation, the pandemic. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the biotech world has greatly benefited from the pandemic. The, go the biotech world are the new heroes of the world. Um, 
everyone is looking directly at scientists to say, to please save us. Please save us. We're hiding in our homes. We can't go to the office. We can't go to restaurants. We can't hang out with our friends. We need a vaccine. We need therapies. We need treatments. And then by the way, why did this happen to us? Right? Oh, climate change has caused human to encroach on bat territory, bat habitat, and stress out the bats. And the bat gets sick and the viruses they harbor all of a sudden come out and they become symptomatic. And that, and that virus that becomes symptomatic can be transmitted now to humans and other animals in crossover events. And so what we've seen directly is um, biotech companies getting a lot more funding biotech companies um, becoming heroes and biotech companies uh, being looked to to provide the answers uh, literally for the for the ills of the world today. So for everyone that's a biotechnologist watching this uh, program, you are uniquely empowered today and will be for a time in the for some time. No bed down. Yes. Right. You know, you can. Uh, you are now being looked to to change the world. And so right. figuring out what your part in that is, is something that um, that I would be doing. Right. I want to add, Thank uh, you. I yeah. want to add one thing here. Right. Uh, our sector has exploded economically at this time, but in con mm -hmm. bio is more than just a few billion dollars of, of capital. It's a movement and That's a movement right. that we want to spread around right. the world. And the one thing I would say is that never before have, you know, so many billions of people learned the word spike protein. Never have they studied Absolutely. the octahedral structure of viruses. Never have so many beings bothered to read about the ecology of bats and understanding how bat heartbeats of a thousand beats per minute somehow translates into different tumor protector genes. Like the whole world just stuck at home on the internet has learned more biology this year than at any time in history. Yeah, and Google is a biology teacher, right? So thank you for that answer. I hope that answers your question, Mr. Ghosh. And now bringing back the attention to the book. So Decoding the World, when was this conceived? How do you guys came out with that plan? <laughs> so, you know, we always, I met Poe years ago and I met a special guy. Um, you know, Poe po, po is a heart of gold and he, he actually has a very unique ability to translate the world around him into something that people understand and get excited by. You know, I had built in the bio and was just trying to solve the world's problems um, in the basement of a lab in San Francisco. And so, you know, when we came together, there was a unique moment. Um, not only, well, so you, you guys have to understand, Poe is the managing, he's not just an author. Poe is the managing director of IndieBio now. He controls all the investments that IndieBio makes. He controls all that money. He's actually an investor. Um, he has a background in finance. So when you get someone that's a doer like that, and an author and a doer like myself, um, you get a really potent mix. I was in a nail salon in uh, Los Angeles, where I actually am right now, um, visiting my parents. And in this nail salon, we were talking about fertility, me and my wife, um, because there was an article on Kim Kardashian. And, uh, and we were talking about it, and all of a sudden all the women in the, in the nail salon we're interested in the genetics of fertility and having children and designer babies. And I realized, I remember I called Poe and I was like, hey, Poe, I think there might be something here. <laughs> Normal people were interested right. in arcane genetics because it was accessible through Kim Kardashian. And the rest, you know, rapidly snowballed into decoding the world. Any, anything you want to add, Poe? Yeah, uh, I think it's a great question because I think it's important to know that we follow the same methodology we preach. Yeah. Ar when Arvind was in that nail salon and I heard him talking about 
his ability to communicate with regular people who didn't know anything about science, I was like, this is what we need to do. But how to do that, we didn't know. We decided, we made a list of like 40 things we wanted to talk about, and we just started writing. And we would, over time, discover these features where we would want to fill the book with these, these proverb pages and we'd fill the book with these text messages back and forth between us. And we have these talking heads and we have all these devices and these things that bring the book together. We didn't plan those. We experimented our way and constantly adjusted it. This, this book was written live. Like what you see on the page and how it's manifested was the creation of something happening live. It wasn't us saying, okay, let, here's all the things we want to tell people and let's write those down and go write it. It was... What do, we, what do we want to know? What do Arvin and Poe want to know? Let's take the reader on that journey and let's figure it out as we go. And that creates a very different experience. It's a very, and it's much more uh, uh, rooted in the approach to biotech that we take in the first place through our companies. Right. Okay, well said, uh, both now. Moving on to our next question, uh, we would, uh, you know, the audience as well as myself, I would live, really want to know, is there something which is not in the book which you wished to add and you would like to share some blurb, like uh, something? Yeah, you, well, I mean, there's always something about the book that isn't in the blurb, right? And um, I think the real, uh, the, the, the real heart of the book really is in Poe and I's relationship. And you saw that in, in how we're talking, but like hanging out in the basement. And when I say the basement, our lab is in the basement and we have a full biotech, biosafety level two lab, one and two, 7,000, you know, uh, 4,000 square feet of just lab space. And tons nice. of sun just hanging out. And we talk about, how the world is changing every single day and how we can actually make it better every single day. And this book, you know, from what the feedback we're starting to get, I think has delivered on what it's like to have an ear in there and understand and see and glimpse how the, how the future is actually created, not just postulated. So uh, I want to say that what's what what you'll never find in the blurb is this sort of extra dimension where the book probes eternal philosophy. So no book publisher wants to say, oh, gosh, while writing about genetics and biotech, they somehow also involve Darwin, Plato, Aristotle, Nietzsche, Camus, Kafka, Martin Luther, world religions, and literally, literally break into fiction in the middle of nonfiction books and end the book with a fairy tale that is about the science of the question, where is the soul? And to all those people who are watching and they might think, oh gosh, okay, it's a bunch of science book, that it's actually also tackling things like what is the meaning of life? How do we make life meaningful? Uh, for all it, mankind, we wanted to know when's where's the soul? Do we have a soul? To tackle questions like that is what's unexpected about the book. And Poe and I, I mean, that's and again, it's because it's what we we think about every day, right? These are the big questions of life that matter, that matters to mm -hmm. everyone. And I think we didn't want to write a book that spoke to ten people out of a million. We wanted to write a book that spoke to a million people out of a million. Masses. That's right. right. Um, right. And, and what matters to them. And I think it's, you know, identity, uh, you know, the, these things matter. And so how, how can we understand identity in a different way than, than we have mm -hmm. before? Right, right. All right. So great insights there from Arvind. Thank you. Now we'll have a small question from Dhruva Sharma. And he asks, what is your message for biotech startups in India or across the globe? How do you uh, want to do it's, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the message is simply uh, keep going and build. Um, you know, the world is waiting for your product. And I think right. my message for all biotech startups, whether they're based in India or anywhere, is focus on product, 
focus on the value you're delivering to your customer. Don't worry about the science that you're chasing to explain why something is mm -hmm. doing the thing it is. Just focus on making sure that you could replicate <laughs> making a product, giving it to a customer and having that customer um, have a lot of value because of it. And they'll pay you for that. Um, we're, you know, uh, I don't like talking about things that are that are going to happen in the future uh, or plans, but I'll, I'll because this is a you know a, a podcast for India, I'll, I'll mention this. Um, my partner at Mayfield is um, building a, a program in Plaksha um, to have an undergrad degree in um, in uh, biotech and building biotech companies, um, as well as we're working on a way to bring Indie Bio itself to India to kickstart the biotech community. That's a great news. That's, That's a great news. I mean, it's a mission, like it closes the loop for me personally, you know, as, Trust. you know, as a ABCD, you know, born in, born in uh, America to be able to come back to India and, uh, and give back uh, mm -hmm. to my country. Mm -hmm. Great. I want to add one thing here. Uh, so I'm speaking to you from Silicon Valley. And it seems like it's far away. But just before this call, I was talking to one of our founders. He's there in India. Uh, yesterday, I was talking to another one of our founders. They're there in India. Uh, we are a global firm. We take startups from up to now 37, 38 different countries. And our, and our venture capital fund, SOSV, is extremely active in India. They're one of the top five most early, early active, top five most active early stage investors in India. So I would oh, recommend to anybody that you apply to Indie Bio. Uh, and right yeah. now we're running the program in the pandemic. Uh, we are not necessarily, no one has to fly here to Silicon Valley. So we are sending money to the startups wherever they are. Great. That's a great news. So guys, if you have a biotech startup, you plan to start a startup and you want to apply, this is the right time to approach Indie Bio and SOSV. So great insight there. Now we'll quickly come to our next question because we are almost halfway into the session. So there's a question, there's a question. Okay, here's a question. How will biotechnology revolutionize the food industry given the current pandemic? What do you? Yeah, it's already revolutionizing the food industry. Now the pandemic will accelerate that. Um, I think right. the new generation, Generation Z, and uh, many, most millennials recognize deeply climate change is a source of their own planet going haywire. And so when you ask any of them, what can you do? What can you do about climate change? They don't know. Um, then they think about it and they say, oh, I could change the way I eat. In India, um, most people are vegetarian already. But around the world, uh, not so. And so people start to switch to a plant-based diet um, because it's, it's, the, it's one of the things they can do. They then ask, can I wear things differently? Can I build differently? And they start to realize that there are things you can do. You just need the products to be able to do so. To, to live more sustainably. And I think that's the thing that's sweeping uh, sweeping change right now. And so going back to food, the first wave was vertically inter integrated companies that are focused solely on you know, providing alternative proteins. The second wave we're seeing are now industry enablers, uh, you know, uh, fat that could be ingredients in, in formulations, um, uh, you know, cheaper media for cell-based meats that they could sell to all cell-based meat companies. When This is right. a classic second stage of industry disruption, which is the enabling technologies become as valuable as the vertically integrated companies earlier. So I'll leave room for Poe to, to pile on there. I think it's uh, worth speaking as well here briefly to the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. You know, and I would say that the you know the fundamental problem there is only 1.5 percent of global land is uh, uh, raised organic, and 
so there's an incredible opportunity here, and and we do have some of our own, you know, what we think of as our sort of best bets in this space to uh, achieve or surpass the benefits of sort of petrochemical-based fertilizers with biological-based systems and methods. And very excited about these as they're coming to market in the next couple of years in the pollination mm -hmm. space, in the row crop space, across all the major grains and all the leafy greens. There are new ways to basically replace the petrochemical fertilizer systems that are have been reliant upon to give farmers confidence that they can do good for the world and produce enough food to feed everybody and to make the kind of money needing to make, which is not very easy in the first place. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Okay, so I have a question while I was reading the book. You mentioned that Indie Bio is a rebel to the capitalism. <laughs> How exactly do uh, you justify? Oh, yes, this is probably my favorite topic from the book. Um, yeah, right. I started by talking about how we have gotten here through capitalism, which is not a bad thing. Let me let me just make sure I understand. Capitalism drives innovation. the The issue is capitalism's time frame is short enough where problems that it creates twenty years down the line won't be uh, addressed until it's profitable to address. And that's short term. That's five years, 10 years, maybe if we're lucky. I, you know, I'm being generous with 10 years. Um, and so uh, what ends up happening is you have this disparity between the what are called externalities, um, the uh, CO2 emissions of oil and, and fossil fuel, and the profit. <laughs> of coal, like we talk about coal, the world, you know, one of the world's largest coal pits that I ran into uh, in Poland. And why is there coal pits still happen, working in, in the world today? Because they were in business last year, they're still in business this year, right? Um, so when we talk, so that's capitalism as a force of inertia. Right. Now, what right. we're talking about with with rebel capitalism really is about using that same mechanism of creating value and giving it to, to people for profit, but doing it in a way that takes coal out of the equation. It takes fossil fuels out of the equation. It takes cows out of the equation and gives people right. what they want and what they desire. But by reinventing production, we can all actually use capitalism to save the world as much as mm -hmm. it has been used to destroy it. Right. So it's rebel capitalism versus real estate capitalism. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. I think let me let me jump in here because I think yep. what capitalism has done for, you know, a hundred years is tried to use the ethos and the spirit of capitalism to defend itself against regulation. And what it's really wanted to do was to... <laughs> Great externalities that it does not account for. And our dear friend, our principal at Indie Bio, Pariksha Sharma, we always talk to our startups about having a clean cap table. And a dirty cap table would be these sort of these hidden debts, these hidden externalities. You owe this guy this money, you promised this stuff. In a way, uh, capitalism today has a dirty cap table. It is creating inequality right. over the world that it's not accounting for. It's creating greenhouse gas emissions that it's not accounting for. The fundamental right. thing that we are focused on here is that mm -hmm. doing better for the planet, doing better for health, health of the planet, health of us as a population, health of our minds, is not a economic suppressant as it's been characterized for so long. It is the greatest single economic opportunity we'll ever have in our lifetimes. And that addressing these externalities creates positive returns rather than negative returns, flips capitalism on its head. Because capitalism has been arguing, oh, you want me to have to deal with my greenhouse gas emissions? Well, then I'll lose money. And then you'll lose money. No, what we're doing with rebel capitalism is saying, no, this is exactly how you make lots of money. And if you look at companies, 
uh, floated in the US like Tesla or Beyond Meat, you see the companies that are solving this are in fact receiving enormous returns and, and uh, getting the faith and confidence of investors. All right, so that's a great insight from Bronson. All right, so uh, guys, I have a uh, add-on question here. Wherein you say that um, Indie Bio is not a think tank; it's a revolution, it's a movement, it's a do tank, right? So when we say that, right, we expect people who have who are doers, not uh, you know planners. Just they don't just dream; they they do it, right? So how do you select your companies when it comes to selecting your companies? Yeah, I don't want to get too nerdy about venture capital, which I could easily do, as Poe always tells me. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. you know, um, you know I, I can start, you know, if we want to have a VC podcast conversation, that's fine. But like, um, I think what, what VC firms should learn are two things. I'll, I'll make it two. One is believe in people. I think mm -hmm. um, a lot of VC firms focus on what people can't do versus what people can do. And it's because they're writing maybe checks that are bigger than they should. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and when you lower the, the, the cost of the risk that you're taking, you can right. actually, you could actually do uh, more interesting and more important investments. And you could bet on people mm -hmm. in a different way. Um, right. The second thing they should learn is that biology as a technology um, is the only technology that can truly rebalance the energy equations of life in order to reinvent mm -hmm. production. We'll have quantum, you know, qu when quantum computers happen eventually, We'll be able to design new materials de novo, but you know we still won't be able to make a vast majority of the of the chemicals that we use, um, the foods that we eat, all these things, the the clothes that we wear. All of that's going to be coming directly from biology, um, and so mm -hmm. this is just you know like biology is at a banner year. Like this is literally the start. We're at the very right. cusp the very beginning of one of the biggest shifts of the past century, um, which is going from just IT uh, mm -hmm. and coding as creating value to mixing coding and biology in order to rebuild the world around us. All right, it's kind of interdisciplinary for both the fields. Yes. Okay, so um, quickly we have a question from the audience. Uh, Anaka Vijayan asks, what changes do you think this book will make? What do you want to see? Yeah, I think it's a it's a great question, Anaka. I think right. uh, understand it's a book, it's not a machine. It's it's a 400-year-old technology, and itself is just words and letters running across the page. So the change that it makes in the world is fundamentally to alter the minds of the readers and in altering their mind, what I mean is not for people to absorb our ideas. There's some of that, but it's to have your own ideas while reading the book, just as shakers, as you described, the real changes made oh, in the book okay. is the new ideas that pop into the minds of the people who've read it. The new way that they right. view their life and view the world around them. That's not something Arvin and I wrote. That's something that you, the reader, wrote and created and invented yourself. And to teach people that your mind is capable, that Arvin and I are not gods here, we're not special. We, we created a system of allowing yourself permission to try, to experiment, to take risks. And if you will put yourself into that frame of mind, you too can have great ideas. The future is unknown and nobody is an expert in that unknown. Okay. And this world experts, this, this sense that the science is in a silo and listen to what they say rather than to you know, have your own ideas, ask questions and pursue the answers. Some of our greatest startups came from founders who 
would not be classified as the best in the world at that space. Venture capital always wants mm -hmm. to find the best person in the world mm -hmm. at that space. But our great startup right. came from people who weren't necessarily with that pedigree or that resume, and they asked simple questions that others weren't asking. Yeah. Right. You know, another another way to talk about this, right, is, uh, you know, it, it really is just, we talk about failure all the time. Oh, Silicon Valley is like, oh, failure is fine. That's not true. That's not true. I, you know, like, I, you know, I'm Indian, right? Like success matters. <laughs> failure is not a good thing, right? Like, like the platitudes coming out of Silicon Valley don't match with the cultural values of where I came from. And so, but I take a lot of risk uh, in my life, um, both physically as a base jumper and, and you know, MMA fighter, as well as career-wise um, with investing. What allows me to do that? I don't think about these things as failure or success. I'm literally just measuring the cost of something going wrong, right? So what, and then when you think about it as cost versus this binary success fail, you're able to make far better decisions and do things that are impossible to right. Right. right? What is it going to, what would it cost, um, you know, to run an experiment and have it fail? Well, if I run this very big grand experiment, it might cost me my entire career or it might cost mm -hmm. me a million dollars. But if I do a tiny, tiny, tiny version of it, which gets to the heart and it costs a hundred dollars, well, that's easy. So the book hopefully will help people understand how to ask the right question to carve down the risk to something that is not just manageable, but something you don't even break a sweat to think about. All right. Beautiful words there. So guys, as you understood, this book wants to initiate a revolution in your mind. Okay, and if you want to initiate that revolution, then the link will be given in the chat box now. Okay, you can go to Amazon.com or Amazon.in and order the book. Okay, moving on right, with our next question. So, do you think Silicon Valley talks like Donald Trump? Apple. <laughs> <laughs> Great question. I love it. <laughs> Silicon Valley is a lot like Donald Trump because it says a whole heck of a lot of things about our future. And listening to it, sometimes you can't tell if it's hype, it's just to scare you, or it's real. And in making so much noise about the future, so what Silicon Valley is doing is talking about things that are happening now, things that are happening three years from now, seven years from now. It also loves to talk about things that are 50 or 100 years away, but talk about them as if somehow they're coming much faster than that. And it creates massive confusion for the world. And out of this confusion, one of the unfortunate things is that the incredible importance of cli addressing climate change is seen as sort of just another thing when it really needs to be the top priority. Right. So quickly, I'll try to bring in one more question. And there's a very nice question or observation by Aishwarya. So the question is, we talk about climate change in air conditioned rooms. Mm -hmm. How do we change this? Can we just can just sustainable solutions actually change the world? Haven't we come way too far exploiting the planet? Nice words, Aishwarya. Over to you. Aishwarya, I, I, I empathize with where you're going i really do like california is on fire <laughs> really um and i think and the you know the pandemic has, has all of us like literally zooming into things rather than meeting in person um we, we talked to npr and they're like um we just want to talk about like how we're going to adapt to this thing versus solving it I completely understand. Um, but th this time, the meteor that's about to hit us, climate change, has a steering wheel. And that's what Poe and I are talking about. 
using biology to turn that steering wheel so we could actually avert the disaster that's coming. Um, if we reinvent production, um, change some behaviors, we will be able to uh, change the course of history. And it requires all of us, which is why we wrote this book. If it didn't require all of us, we would have just continued in the basement. But this book is the clarion call for all the scientists and all the entrepreneurs and all the non-scientists that can join and help these companies um, do something. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to overstate that, um, you know, even in Iceland, where this little tiny country <laughs> can do nothing about climate change, and yet all its glaciers are melting, um, you know, they don't take a fatalistic attitude they roll up their sleeves and say, okay, well, you know, we're going to do our part because that's all you can do. And when you do that, you actually have a clear conscience. You, you can go to bed with a, with a clear heart um, versus feeling like you're powerless in the world. And it's a way of taking back what a bunch of bad choices for 200 years is taking from us. All right. I hope that answers your question, Ashwarya, and beautiful words there. Thank you, Arvind. Now, we are running out of time, so we enter our next segment, which is the rapid fire round. It's kind Ooh. of a fun round Ooh. where what we have done is we will show a word on the screen, and whoever picks it up first, say whatever comes in your mind next. Okay? So okay. You don't have time to think. If you think, you lose. Okay? So... <laughs> Kind of a game, right? So let's start with the first word. Are you ready, guys? Arvin, Bronson? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. let's start in trouble. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's start with the first word China. China's China game. More of an impact on the world in the next 50 years than anything else, than AI, than genetic revolution and climate change because it controls AI, climate change, and the huge impact in the genetic revolution. Right. Okay. So the next word is here. USA. What do you think? What comes in your mind? USA leads the world in divorce. Okay. We lead the world <laughs> in dog and cat ownership. We lead the world in inequality. Yeah. Decline. <laughs> Decline is the word. Sadly. <laughs> All right. So uh, the next word, I'm sure it's going to be interesting for you guys. Meat. What comes to your mind? Gone. Gone. <laughs> gone. <laughs> the meat will be gone. Okay. Next word, indie bio. The future. What comes to mind? The future, right? So the future is right here in indie bio. Okay, biotech. What comes to mind? Not just therapeutics. Not just therapeutics. Okay. Technology. Right. A base technology. technology. Right. Okay. Programmable. This is the, the hot topic here. Global climate change. Reversible. Reversible. Okay. That's a very optimistic take uh, <laughs> Alvin has. Right. Nothing is inevitable. So, nothing, nothing is inevitable. Right. That's what right. I'm the cover, by the way. The cover of that book, the, the uh -huh. code of those A's, T's, C's, and G's spells out uh -huh. nothing. Nothing is inevitable. Right. Let's not be fatalistic. Not, let's not give up. Okay, let's not give up. All right, let's start with the next word, and that is Arvind Gupta. What comes to your mind? Just an average guy. <laughs> Just an average guy. That's an understatement. No, you're not average. <laughs> uh, you know, biotech professionals in India look up to you, so a fighter. An average guy. A, fighter. <laughs> a fighter, a fighter, right? Okay, Bob Bronson, what comes to your mind? The best. <laughs> the best okay being po being po being po okay being <laughs> right being okay okay so the next word is here three two one 
what comes in your mind? Facebook. Cancer. 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 Okay. So Facebook, Facebook is cancer. cancer. Facebook is a lot. Cancer is a lot like Facebook. Okay. Cancer is like Facebook. Facebook is not cancer, right? So audience, you know it now. Please quit Facebook if possible. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Okay. So the next word comes in three, two, one. India. What comes in your mind? Optimistic. Optimistic. So, I, I okay. Think, I think India is the future. Of, you know, more than a billion, a billion and a half people cut like billion and a half people rising. I, I watched the first chapter in China. The second mm -hmm. chapter in India, in India is going to be even greater. It takes longer because it's a democracy. I remember mm -hmm. that clearly when I was in China. Everything happened fast because it's dictated. In India, the right. bureaucracy. Everyone complains. Everything takes too long. Takes too long. Takes too long. How does success and right. revolution happen? Very slowly. Right. Then all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next word comes in three, two, one. Future. What do you think of future? What comes in your mind? The future is everyone's to create. The future. Unwritten. Okay. Yeah. It's unwritten. Unwritten. We can write. We can revolutionize that. Okay. So the next word comes here. Fun. How do you see this word? What's fun for you? You make things fun. You know, like you can have fun so much more of the time than you realize. If you just give yourself permission to, life is always mm -hmm. going to be more work. Uh, the only thing you can do is make that work more fun. Yeah, this is. This, I mean, it's worth si sitting on this one for um, for thirty seconds. Um, so many people want to be taken seriously, and so they mm -hmm. think that they can't have fun in order to do so. It's not true. You could be dead serious and have fun at the same time. And if you can do like one, doesn't take away from the other. And when you do that, it's actually you know it. it it's rare for people to do that because it takes some confidence, but believe in yourself to be able to have fun. And the, that alone, that word alone, I shake her. I like that you put that up. Um, makes would make the world a better place if people had more fun, had the courage to have more fun. Right. So have the courage to have more fun in your work or wherever you are. And definitely life will be a okay. cake. You, okay. you don't have to scowl and, be angry in order to be serious. <laughs> <Correct. like> <laughs> of course. Coronavirus, how do you see this? I see it as uh, 11 proteins, the same 11 proteins that were in MERS and SARS-CoV-1. I see it as, uh, as open reading frame genetic simplicity that isn't so scary it's just we as humankind thought the years and decades of fighting that nature we thought that it was mankind itself that we had to fear we didn't understand that nature is still something to fear that's right right okay so the last word coming up three two one biotechnica the future again <laughs> Okay. You know, it's, Thank you. No, you you are spearheading, and Biotechnica is spearheading a revolution um, that's rippling across the globe. And like I said, India is the greatest wave to um, ignite. It's the, it's the greatest powder keg. I mean, the amount of incredible intellectual uh, talent mm -hmm. that resides mm -hmm. in the subcontinent is greater than anywhere else on the planet. By a lot, not just by a little bit. And when all of that's going in the same direction around and using biology as a technology, um, I really can't wait to see what happens because I think I think India can lead the world one day in this field. Certainly. Uh, very encouraging words there, Arvind. Thank you so much. I feel really elated. Right. I am glad that I chose the word biotechnica at the end. All right. So with this, we come to an end of our session. And 
what we have in store now is some surprise gifts for all our attendees. And of course, uh, if you are seeking a participation e-certificate, definitely you're going to get that. Now, let me quickly come to some questions because we still have five minutes left. And OK, um, I hope there are no more questions. All right, so let, let, let us spend the last five minutes of this session talking about the book which brought us together, which, which brought all of us together, you know, the audience and, of course, uh, the authors, uh, Arvind and Branson. Thank you so much for joining in today. Now, one interesting thing about this book, which I am personally going through while I was reading, I'm still reading the book, right? So I'm already going, undergoing that transformation is mm -hmm. this book tries to initiate a revolution in the mind of the reader. Mm -hmm. And truth be told, if you really want to create something tangible in this world, then everything starts here. And mm -hmm. these two gentlemen right there have tried to create a revolution in your mind. So don't start the book without pen and paper. This is the book which is going to create that conversation in your mind that what am I doing? Can I do something meaningful? Can I do something better for the world? Can't I change the world? And look at the positive attitude towards life, towards anything these two uh, gentlemen have. And they are sitting at the top of one of the largest venture fund in biotech, right? And if they are so optimistic, what stops you, the audience, the biotechnica fans, what stops you? You know, it's brilliant opportunity for all of us because coronavirus is actually the 9 by 11. In fact, this is the line from your book. So coronavirus is the 9 by 11, which actually has opened the eyes of people to acknowledge that, yes, viruses exist, pandemic can happen, and let us not just sit in AC rooms and talk about climate change. There, there is much more what, than what meets the eye, and this book is definitely a must read. Now, I would like to request all of you, if you can buy this book, the Kindle version is the cheapest one. Go ahead. You can even, you know, buy a, you know, you can even download a sample uh, chapter there, you know, read through. You'll realize how important this book is. And afterwards, when you guys um, have finished the, this book, I will urge you to go ahead, write that review, give a five star to this book, because this book is going to help many more people like you, okay, to start a revolution, right? So uh, Arvind and Bo have really done a great job, but those words must reach you all. Otherwise, it's of no use, right? So the link is right now given in the description. It is shown on the screen also here. It is btnk.org slash decoding hyphen third hyphen world. So just click that, go to Amazon, okay? Order it. If you are on, uh, if you are from the Biotechnica global audience, you can go to amazon.com and order it. Buy it out, guys. Those thousand rupees are, or, you know, $16 are going to change your life. I think that's an investment everybody should be ready to make. All right. So uh, with these thoughts, I wish to thank Arvind. I wish to thank uh, Bo. And, you know, Arvind and Bo, the day we were approached by the publishers of the book, 12 books, and they said that we want to do a webinar with you guys. I was so elated that, okay, I'm getting a chance to play a very significant role in the revolution called biotechnology, right? So this 400 year, year old technology is right here in a, a country of billion people, a world of um, you know six to eight billion people who are watching this webinar or will watch this webinar in the future. I have only one message to make. Arvind and Po have done a great job. Go read this book or whatever books uh, they write in the future. I'm sure Arvind, there, there are more, many more books coming up, right? Yes. There's a uh... Two more at least in this trilogy and more after that. I'm excited. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. And thank, thank you. Thank you, Arvind. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Welcome you. Thank you to the audience. We welcome too. you to India. In your evening. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yes. So my dear Biotechnica fans, subscribers, followers, and critics of Biotechnica, we thank you so much for joining us this evening. This was a real pleasure talking to all of you, talking to Bo Bronson, talking to Erwin, and talking to you all about future, which can be written and unwritten by all of us, 
the power of our mind. Thank you so much. After this, now we'll be sharing a feedback form link. Please fill the feedback form so that we know where we lagged and how can we improve. And followed by that, you'll be redirected to the surprise gift. Okay. And I'll be sending you an email with more details. Okay. And see you soon in our next webinar. Thank you so much for joining in and have a good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you sir.